Hello. Hi there. Hello. Hi everyone. Hello. Hi. Um, I'm just gonna kind of get right, like, like right to the to the Hello, point of this one because I I, I I realize if I sit here and try and thank you, I'm gonna turn off the uh, text to speech if that's okay with everyone, just because we all know how my brain works and I would be constantly distracted and not make any points if I just sit here with text to speech on because it distracts me really easily. But Hello, hi, welcome. Hope you're all doing well. I myself am okay, by the way. That's probably like something I should preface straight off the bat. I am not, there's, I am no cause for concern, right? That's that's not what this stream is about um, at all. Uh, I'm not at my best, and that's what triggered this, definitely. But I'm not in a worrying position of any kind. And that's kind of the point I want to get across straight out of the, straight out of the fucking, you know, straight out of the, straight out of the gate. But what I wanted to speak about today was, uh, or, or yeah, go on, let's, let's say that. The, the thing I wanted to speak about today was obviously what it says in the title, myself, mental health, and social media. Because I feel like these are all, no, obviously not the myself part, but the uh, social media and the, uh, what'd you call it? What's the thing? What's the thing called? Uh, uh, mental health part. I obviously talked about a lot, a hell of a lot, especially in conjunction with one another. Because uh, a lot of um, mental health problems today are um, uh, made worse by or uh, caused or, you know, kind of made more apparent by social media. And I think there's a hell of a lot of conversation around that, but I don't think there's much conversation from the standpoint of creators from the angle I'm looking at. There's, there's, don't get me wrong, there's plenty of creators that have spoken about the kind of uh, trials and tribulations of being content creators on the internet and what that causes for them and blah, blah, blah. I'm not, I'm no fucking, you know, like, uh, groundbreaker with this one. Like, it's nothing groundbreaking. But it's something I don't feel like it's spoken about enough. Um, and it's something that, um, I suffer with the most. So I think I want to speak about that. Pure person, pure, pure, partially for my own sort of selfish reasons of... I think I'd quite like talking through this and kind of explaining myself. Partially to kind of dampen the emotions that I'm feeling. And you'll get why I'm saying that when I go into it. And and partially for anyone, uh, mainly creators I would suppose, but I suppose anyone who's also aspiring to uh, sort of have someone to go, Oh, hey, this is a common thought, which I'm sure it is. So... Uh, the main sort of nitty gritty I want to get into when speaking about me and this job of mine is kind of like, um, I'm, I'm quite an anxious person. I always have been. That's nothing new. That's nothing the internet caused. And in fact, I'd argue that since I became a full-time content creator, I have been overall for the past, what, over a year now I've been doing this? It's, I've now officially been a full-time content creator for just over a year. And... I feel mentally that I have had one of the best years of my life. However, that being said, I also would say, and this, uh, th this to be completely true, that I have felt perpetually overwhelmed for around a year. I haven't felt as anxious as I always did. I, I felt way more fulfilled in what I do. I've made great friends. I've had great experiences, but I've been perpetually overwhelmed. And I'd put, I'd attribute that to uh, the kind of unique circumstance and, and when i say unique i mean somewhat unique i'm not the only person to go through this um but more unique to the sort of like a lot of the guys who came up via the dream smp uh because the growth we saw on social media was basically unprecedented no one had ever grown as fast as a lot of us guys did joining the dream smp and that is incredible and something i'm so very grateful for i mean there was a month on youtube where uh, i was one of the most, like, uh, no, like, like, top five fastest growing channels in the world. Like, you know, that's something I never expected in my life. I never expected to hit a million subs ever, and I basically got a full million in one month. Like, that was the level of growth I was experiencing early days, right? That's incredible. However, when your life goes from being a kid from Mansfield who's been working a nine to five, um, you know, quite an anxious person uh, in school, blah, 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 to then overnight having this kind of dream job and these people who know who you are and this expectation to kind of, I don't know, like do these things. I've just kind of never sat back to look at my life and go, 
look look at how this has changed and kind of taken i've never i've always been uh change uh, change averse i never liked change and to undergo so much you know i've moved away i'm living alone for the first time i live halfway across the country with a whole new group of friends doing a whole new job in a whole new sphere i never experienced and it wasn't until i'd say like last month i actually sat down and was like wow that's a fucking lot to have happened in a year like in a year to be in th that different position is like wild beyond my wildest dreams world and and i think i just because of the and this is what i'm going to get into this is kind of the social media part of things where i'm going to pick my sort of faults with it um when it comes to social media basically the whole game because social media it's a game at the end of the day youtube especially twitch instagram tiktok the whole thing's a fucking game there's algorithms to appease there's techniques there's tricks there's blah 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 and the longer you're around them the more you get to know them and i wouldn't say i'm an expert at any of them as of yet and that's another point i'm going to go into but this this whole sphere is a game and um it's so momentum based that game it's like once you're doing well it's like i oh don't know what's a good example you know when you're playing guitar hero right and like you get more points the more notes you hit like like the more notes you hit you get a multiplier So it's like you hit 100 notes you get two times multiplier hit another hundred notes you get three times Hit another hundred notes you get four times second you fuck up a note second you drop a fucking note It's like pff, straight back to zero times right and that's kind of how I see like the internet The internet is this game of making sure it's hit after hit after hit and carry on be frequent Like like you know this constant sort of like keeping the mind occupied and I don't think I've had a moment to stop in case I fuck up one of the notes, right? That's how it, uh, it felt. And I did that in in January, you know? I Some people might not have even noticed this. And hopefully, ideally, I, uh, this isn't offensive if you haven't. I hope to God you haven't. That's better. But uh, I, I, I uploaded my last video on the 24th of December. I haven't uploaded since. I was, I basically got midway through January, we've been unable to book any, so me and my producer Tim, the way we do videos, because the videos I do on, you know, sit in my room and, and do shit, we generally sit down and we, you know, we, sorry, we sit down, we plan a video, we go outside, we film it, there's camera guys, there's people to get involved, there's producers, there's, there's, there's a lot of people involved in the vlogs I make, vlogs, at this point I don't even know if I call them vlogs anymore, it's just kind of what everyone calls them, it's kind of what I've stuck with anyway um takes a long time to plan these videos and we were about mid-january and we'd been unable to get anyone we'd been able unable to find anyone who would host us to let us film on their location anyone who would line up with our schedule to come along and film with us we could get no one down it's about mid january at this point and i've been 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 stressing super hard about youtube because the thing is about youtube i uh i came up through doing twitch like i gained my first group of my audience, uh, my first bunch, my first 100, 200,000 followers, doing Twitch. And I started doing YouTube because I was like, hey, I've just quit my job, I've got all this free time, I've always kind of wanted to try my hand at YouTube, I'm gonna give it a go because there's an audience looking out for me, and I got people who know what they're doing on the internet to make sure this is a success. You know, I had Tommy backing me, I had Wilbur, I had all these people, right? So I'm like, I know that this can be successful, and why not try my hand at something that I could be successful in and find enjoyable? The only thing is, it was never something that came natural to me, like Twitch. Twitch has always been something that is like naturally I find it easy just to hit go live and chat shit for a bit and like it, It's because I talk a lot like and honestly, that's like the main if you can talk a lot Try Twitch. You'll be great at it. You know, it's not hard um, You know and it's like I Came up through doing Twitch and I realized um, I Kind of started doing YouTube And was taught how to do it but I never found it easy. It's never something I found easy. It was always work for me and always something I found stressful to get right because I didn't ever really know what I was doing. And now I'm kind of, the people who were there every single day to help me are busier and they can't do that stuff anymore, which is completely not their fault. This isn't a, a fucking way of going, those people let me down. No, they fucking didn't. They were giving me a help when they had free time. They have less free time nowadays. That's how it works. Um, but I can't believe Zach's been subbed for 25 fucking months. Sorry, I just spotted that in my feed. Zach, thank you for being around for 25 months. I think you were my first ever sub, and I fucking appreciate you, dude. Literally, you I think you've subbed, like, almost every month since I started Twitch. It's fucking incredible. Anyway. Um, anyway. Sorry, I got distracted. It's just such a crazy thought to me. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah, so YouTube's hard for me. Blah, 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 blah. It's stressful. I got into about December. Um, in December, I made... 
two of the best videos I think I've ever made. The the two videos I uploaded in December, the dream, uh, the dream murder mystery one, and the uh, going outside and pranking people one, are the two best videos I think I've ever made. Whether they're my, they're my favorite videos, I don't know, but I think they're the best made, right? You know, there's some really funny moments of the goat yoga vlog. It's probably one of my personal favorite. I think the goat yoga vlog is probably my personal pa personal favorite, but those are like the best vlogs I've made, in my opinion. However, those videos, pfft, because for some reason, and I don't know why, but when I spoke to people in January, I realized everyone had suffered from that shit in December. Also to do with the way I title and thumbnail those videos. But uh, again, this is another thing I'm going to get into. Um, you know, and that was really demotivating because it was like watch, like watching projects that I'd really put a lot of effort and heart into, more so than other videos I've done in the past. You know, I made videos that have done well that I didn't really put much effort into, and that's not that fulfilling. The ones that I put effort into that then pop off, like the boat video, that was huge. The boat video is one of my favorite videos ever. I think it was one of the best ones I made. I loved everything about it. The camera work just with the drone and shit. I was so happy with what we, we made. And it came out and it did really well. And I was like, great. We did a fucking good job. Well done, everyone. And then these happen and they don't do that great. I mean, they don't do badly. This is the problem. I also have a horrible, horrible relationship with like success failure. I'm very, I, I spoke about that. If you saw my Dr. K interview, you're gonna, you'll probably know this about me. You got like, in my mind, there's kind of like a spectrum, right? Of like success, failure, and you kind of like major success, major failure, somewhere in between. It's like, eh, it, was, it wasn't really great, but we learn. Right? I'm very polar. Like, I don't really have, I'm, I don't in my life have very much sense of scale, full stop. Uh, I'm very, very um, kind of polar, polarized. And um, I'm like, failure, success. Like, that's the way my brain works. And those, although they did well, like, they both got a million views each, and like, that's a fucking amazing thing. To then look back at the videos I was doing that were like, like five million views and seeing that, it was like, I fell off. And it was like, I'm just like, oh shit, I failed. And like, I just, I'm a very bad perfectionist and and that hurt. So it demotivated me. And I'd been stressing a lot about getting those videos out. I was stressing in January because we couldn't get anything filmed and I wanted to get a video out on time. And then eventually I went, you know what? I feel very lost in what I'm doing content wise. I wasn't sure what to do next. I've never found that YouTube ideas come easy to me. Um, mainly because I think I am um, a perfectionist and, you know, um, I think I am a perfectionist and I won't take ideas forward until I'm confident with them. And that takes a lot of time for me. So like, it could take me a week to come out with a good YouTube idea. I literally came up with the idea that, uh, I like, I'm going to, the next video I'm going to film, I came up with the idea for today and like this massive, like fucking call with my producer where we like sat down and really, really, we've been trying for days to get an idea and we finally just hit something that worked. And like, that's amazing. I'm really excited about this idea. It's like, I think it could be one of my best videos yet. I'm 100% sure of it. It might take, it might be another month before it's out. And I know I said I'd have a video out soon, but I watched that video back and I don't think it's the thing to come back from. It's kind of lazy. It's not bad, but it was something I, I, it was something I, it's all the behind the scenes footage over the year. And there's some really funny moments in there, but ultimately upload, what would you rather see? A new video that I've really put heart and soul into, or here's all the best moments from over the year. That video will come out one day, the behind the scenes one. It will come out. I just don't think it's the video to come back from a two month break from. Cause it, it just, to me, that feels lazy. It's like I took two months off and couldn't even be fucked to record to come back. I don't know. Um, I definitely want it to um, come out, but um, not yet. It's not the one. Everyone's saying they watched them both and that's huge because I will put that video out. I will, I will put that video out. Just not yet. I don't think it's ready yet. I don't think it's right there yet, but hey. Someone said something, what did they say? And this is the thing, everyone's saying two months isn't that long. I, again, I, I um, hold myself to unreal standards. Unreal standards. And that's another thing. Uh, but anyway, I think what I want to talk about is, one, I kind of want to let people into my head. So when I'm not around, they get that I'm not lazy. Because that's a big fear of mine. I don't know why. I've always been scared of coming off lazy. Again, this is all the stuff I talk, spoke about on Dr. K. But uh, I, I want people to understand why things take their time. And I hope, it feels like if people know why I've taken this time, then they'll get it. Which admittedly, I didn't mean to take two months off. I went to take one month off for my mental because ultimately I was thinking, I said to my dad, I remember saying to him like, I don't really know what to do with YouTube right now. And I think I'm going to take a month just to sit and think about what I want to do with this channel. And I kind of did that in January. And then February 9th, I was like, I'm waking up today. Phil's is coming down. We better record. It's about to be good. Uh, and then I woke up that morning, tested positive for COVID and went back to bed because I couldn't go outside and film. Um, and ultimately, uh, that was shit because like, 
basically, I wasn't able to then start planning again till the 21st because I, I was sick with COVID till the 18th. I was streaming, but I was sick and I was going to sleep straight after stream. And then on the 18th, when I finally recovered, was the day, coincidentally, my family had booked time off of work to come and visit me in Brighton. And I just happened to get better that day. It was a complete coincidence, genuine miracle. But like they showed, they, they went, how do you feel? I'm like, actually, I think I'll be good by tomorrow. And I, te I tested that morning and I was negative for the first time in a, in a week. Total luck. Um, so anyway, because they were like, we'll just have a holiday in Brighton. If we can't see you, it's fine. But I did get to see them. I spent three days with my family, um, you know, and that was great. I really enjoyed it. It was really good for my, my mental health as well. I love seeing my family. Um, and then I finally got back to work. And finally, finally, I'm now in a position right now where like we're finally starting planning again. But the thing is, I might not be able to record until like mid-March because again, all the planning these videos take is fucking crazy. But the idea we came up with today, we think we might be able to bring out forward. So hey, feeling pretty good. But anyway, I'm not here to tell you about my schedule and what I'm working on behind the scenes. Um, but I wanted to speak about the fact that it's like, I don't think social media, the one thing about social media that I really hate that really bothers me, and if you are like me, like a perfectionist, YouTube does not reward making good content. Because the best content I have made is not the best YouTube videos I've made. The best YouTube videos are the ones with the most clickable titles, the most clickable thumbnails, the ones that hold retention the best, which doesn't mean it's a good video necessarily. It just means it's like that ADHD TikTok formula where it's like, I fucking, I'm gonna do this and then that, and, then, and, then, and like, whoa, uh, I can't even look away because I fucking haven't had a moment to think. Like, that's the shit that works. And don't get me wrong, I could sit down and make that shit. I, I could, I, I'm capable of that, but I would ultimately quit within about six months because I'd hate it. I like, in, I'm enjoying the stuff I make. And I want, what I want to do and what I'm trying to learn to do is find a blend between making the absolute best content that I can make, which I think, I'm not saying I make the best content. I'm not saying Jack Manifold makes the best content. That's not what I'm saying. That way, if you want to subscribe. Um, I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that I think I make the best content I can make at any given moment. Like, I, I, I feel like I make, I, what I put out is the best that I can do most of the time. Not always, but most of the time. Um, and I'm happy with that. But it, YouTube rewards consistency, which when you're trying to put a lot of time into videos, isn't always something you can do. Frequency to a degree as well, which I can't do fucking weekly uploads. I just can't do that. Um, not with the time. Like each video takes about two weeks to plan minimum. It's like, no, I can't do that. Um, I could try real hard. I can maybe do weekly at the very most, but I need to wait. I, I need more people. Like I need a bigger team behind me, which I don't have right now. I got my one editor and my one producer and that's it. It's, it's, it's us three against the world, you know? Not while I want to stream consistently on Twitch, which I'm enjoying. Can I just say throughout all this, I have fucking last month on Twitch. I adored it. So thank you, you guys for being here. Genuinely Twitch, especially throughout February was the best fucking month. It's the, it's, it's the second most streamed month I ever did. Um, and I fucking loved every minute. And I will continue to stream more. Like, I want to stream more because I'm enjoying putting those hours in. And if I want to do that, then I can't be uploading weekly as well. I don't have time to do all those streams and all that. I mean, I, I do. I, I physically have the time. But I, I, I mean, I also like having a life. Like, I like seeing my friends and shit. And it's like, I'm not willing to sacrifice that time. Um, you know. Uh, but, yeah, I... I really str struggled to reconcile with the fact that, like, it wasn't the best videos. It, like, it was like when the best stuff I was making wasn't the stuff that worked the most for YouTube that was super demotivating. And I've kind of realized that you, there's a middle ground and I'm working towards that. But, um, you know, I wanted to say to people, like, hey, if you are someone who makes content and you don't necessarily like if you if you make a good video like a video you're proud of which i've done and it doesn't do as well as you'd expect which again i've done don't be don't beat yourself up and think you did a shit job you didn't do a good job at playing the game but it depends what your goal is is your goal to play the game and and, and i'm partially i could play the game way more my goal is to play the game like that my goal is to play the game more than i'm currently doing definitely i've decided that but it isn't too it isn't to play the game through and through. And that's, I think, what I'm trying to realize. But I'm glad. But also, as much as I, I say I was only supposed to have January off to decide that, it isn't until about a week ago I decided that. So having February off, as much as I was forced into it and it stressed me because I wasn't ready to have that sort of time off, my brain wasn't prepared 
for that stress because all I've done for the past month is stress about the fact that I want to get back to uploading because like a month off felt okay two months felt dangerous like it felt like channel killing which I realize is an insane thought because it's not it's not channel killing how many people have taken months off you know and I know you guys keep saying you're gonna keep watching the shit so why would it but like yeah there's a little voice there's a little fucking voice that's like you're we gone you know back to the nine to five um you know uh, and that's uh, that's um you know, everyone goes at their own pace. And I think just, just know that. Um, it is how it is, you know. Um, and equally, there's been other shitty things. I, social media, they, they, I think as platforms, there's very few platforms that really pay attention to the mental health of their creators. YouTube renownedly. I mean, getting rid of the dislikes was supposed to be like their way. And the thing is, here's my thing. I have never once, and some people this is a problem for, but, but me personally. I have never once been upset by hate. I've never had hate and it went through my- I've got thick skin, I've, I've always had. I have never, ever received a piece of hate that hurt, really. The worst thing anyone has ever said to me, and now I'm gonna see a shit ton of this, and it's honestly me saying this is gonna make it less impactful, because people are gonna start saying it because they think it gets me, but once- This is the thing, I'm, I, I feel like whenever I see hate, it's like, well, no, you're just saying that to try and upset me. So it's not going to, because it's not true. The ones that upset me, if I'm gonna be real, is if someone watches me in a video and they're like, that was a weak video from Jack. Yeah, they're just being honest. They're just like, I thought he was kind of weak in that one. That's what fucking hurts. That shit hurts when I try and people aren't impressed. That's the only shit that will get through to me. Like, like not reaching expectation. That's the shit that hurts. The shit that's cool is like when someone's like, look at this, look at this boy. He, he ugly boy. You know, like whatever. They can say whatever they want. Like that shit has never affected me in my life. Uh, and... This is the thing, so YouTube did that thing where they were like, we're gonna get rid of the, uh, the, uh, dislikes because we don't want creators to see the fact that they're getting hated on. And it was like... No, now, no. No one, I don't think any creator really, really was like, it's the dislikes that fuck with me. It's the dislikes that ruin my mental health. No, it's the fucking 10 out of 10 system that's like... Yo, know, like, because this is the reason I got so demotivated, and every YouTuber experienced this in my circle, at least. We were all getting, like, 8s to 10s out of 10s for, like, a month. That's awful. It's an awful feeling. You, as, you, as a YouTuber, you upload that fucking video, and it's, like, an 8 out of 10. You're like, cry, cry, you know? I remember celebrating a 6 during December. That's how bad it was, you know? The 10 out of 10 system was the worst thing YouTube ever did. And then, sh and then the shit, like... Showing you how down you like they just show you like oh, this is down from this month Like they just show you if you are YouTube is peaks and troughs, right? Like I'm not falling off because December was worse for me than fucking July. I gained 700,000 subscribers in July I'm never gonna do that again ever or April whatever it was. I'm never ever gonna do that again most likely that was unprecedented That's like mr. Beast type shit. I'm never gonna be mr. Beast, right? You know They're just b comparing you To like I'm never gonna grow as fast as I did at the start, right? Of course I'm not. I had a pre-established audience at the start when I was starting. And I was like, everyone was excited to see this new guy on the scene. I'm not that new guy on the scene anymore. I'm not going to grow the way I was growing. That's a ridiculous notion, right? But like, I'm still growing. I'm still getting views every month. And it's like, it's like, it's like, but, it, but in compare, but in YouTube forcefully comparing you to yourself, it's like, you see yourself at your peak and you see yourself go down. You're like, I'm falling off. Like, your brain can't help but have that fear. Because the thing is, the one thing, and this is about self-employment generally, y this is not a secured thing. I am not necessarily going to have this position forever. You know, I mean, cancel culture has proven that, that, that people can disappear overnight. The internet's fickle. You know what I mean? I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing. So certain things within cancel culture have been completely justified. There's also been people who I think have been unjustly canceled. I'm not here to defend people. I'm not here to, you know, but, but there's been people canceled that I don't think really deserved it. But let's let's not go into that right now. Um, you know, it's like, it's like, you know, the internet's very fickle, and it's proven that time and time again. Like, I, I just think of examples like, remember when Nicole all first blew up? It's about a year, it's, it's like the two year anniversary of that today, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and I, I, I just, I, I spoke to Nicole yesterday, so I guess it's on my mind. You know when Nicole all blew up, right? Remember that shit? And she was like, the shit. And went fucking through the roof in like a day. Because everyone liked the OK Boomer video. And then... 
Uh, and and it's like, pretty girl, pretty girl. Like, this is literally all the fucking internet. Like, uh, bot, bot, woof, woof, pretty woman, right? The whole internet around Nico Lol. And she's a lovely fucking person, right? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not here to, like, diminish her growth to that. But then, a bunch of these fucking dudes find out she has a boyfriend. We gone. Like, like, she, like, she got this massive unfollow surge. Like, like, I don't know if anyone remembers that, but it was like, it's like, it was fucking insane. It was like, woman, not single. Ah, uh, we gone. And just like, we're out. And like, they left immediately. And it was like, this is what I mean by, like, it was just fucking crazy and so unjust. And it's like, um, you know, it's like, it, time and time again, the internet's proved it's fickle. So, um, like, disappearing out of... Uh, the the public eye to me like like being away from the YouTube space is scary because I've seen how fickle the internet is and I'm like What if they just forget about me? And it's an irrational thought because no one really will I've been a viewer I know that you don't forget about creators who take breaks because uh, I've been there, you know, it's, it's insane, but it's like You can't help but feel that because This is my dream. This is my dream and it has been for years I've, I've been I've been trying at this shit since I was 11 years old, you know so it's a very scary position to be in when you get it all of a sudden and you weren't quite prepared to have this. Like, I've always wanted this, but I wasn't prepared to, like, hold the responsibility. And I think I've done a good job given, I like to think. But, like, you know, it, it's just that comes with a lot of stress. And it's only now that it feels like, like, I want to work and I can't. That anxiety is kicking in of, like, what happens if I don't work? And, like, realistically, it's probably fine. But, like, you know, it's a scary fucking thought. Um, and I think, I don't really know where I was going with this. I feel like I've like self-therapized as opposed to actually making any points that anyone can come away with. I just basically wanted to say that like, hey, the problem, and the COVID thing as well. If you were a streamer that came up in COVID, the, 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 ju the juice, the, the views, the views during the COVID pandemic were like insane. You know, everyone's views were so up from what they'd been. It was the best period of time to be a content creator, right? And then everyone goes back to school and the viewers go down. Natural. No one's fault. No one fell off. No one got worse at their jobs. And YouTubers have been doing this for years, understood that. But people who came up during COVID, who'd only ever known that height, who then lose that height, it's a fucking terrifying thing to happen. Like, terrifying thing to happen. And I don't mean to be really numbers oriented because I feel like this stream is. But um, I like to think that I'm not a numbers oriented person in a lot of my decisions. But the internet kind of forces it. It's like you can't have this job and not think about the numbers of it. Because the numbers are what keep you afloat. Like it's, it's you know, it's, you don't have to be obsessed with them. And you don't have to be vain. But you, you, you do need to know, you know, you need to know what's going off. That was fucking detrimental for me now. Like, yeah, no, to your mental, you're like, wow, I've fallen off. And then you, and then what I did, what, I, what made me realize is for some reason, I'm very bad at comparing myself to others, but it kind of helped me in this situation because I looked at all the people around me and kind of looked at their numbers and realized, oh, everyone's down. And like, everyone was just as down as I was. And it was like, oh, I didn't fall off. I, everyone still likes me. Just not as many people can be in a stream at one time because a lot of them, like, the time zones don't cross over the way they used to. Like, at one point in time, like any time of the day, everyone was free because of COVID. Where now it's like, no, some kids are now in school and some kids are born and this and that and the other. And, you know, it's like, well, you know, um, yeah, everyone's down by the same percentage, of course. No, because it's 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 not us. It's it's the platforms themselves, and this is no one's fault. It's not the platform's fault either. It's the world going back to normal, which is thank fuck, eh? Thank fuck, we can go back to normal. The UK is finally at a point now it's dropped all its COVID rules. You don't have to wear masks anymore. Because it's basically gone over here. It's basically un not unexistent. It's like, thank Jesus. It only took us since the back end of 2019. Well, you know, early 2020, I suppose. The, the virus starts in back. But, but like the, the restrictions, you know, for now, exactly. It might happen again. Who fucking knows? I don't think so. You know, an A. You know. Thank you, Robbo, for coming in the chat. I appreciate seeing you here, man. Um, yeah, the video is not... The, the video, sorry. My thing. It's not gone here, but people still don't wear masks. Exactly. Look, we still have to wear masks and everything. And you should. You should do it while ever your nation is in a position where it's necessary. But in the UK, it's so increasingly rare that it, at this point, it's, you know, it isn't gone in the UK, but the restrictions are. And the thing is, here's the thing. 
we cannot wait till the restrictions are gone to... Sorry, we can't wait till COVID is gone to lift the restrictions. You know what I mean? That's not feasible. Uh, because ultimately, COVID is going to become the uh, the new flu. Like, every year, people are just going to get COVID. And the thing is, from what we know of the like the Omicron variant, it's way less deadly than any of the previous variants. Probably year after year, it's going to fluctuate between being a little bit worse this year and a little bit less this year. But ultimately, it is in a virus's best interest to evolve to become less deadly. Over time, viruses do that. It's how it works. This isn't me just saying shit and trying to fill you with hope. The whole point of a virus is to stay in your body longer to reproduce and spread. If it kills you, it loses its host and, di and dies along with you. So ultimately, over time, this virus is likely to get less and less more deadly. Meaning, even though we could still wear masks and could still stay inside to stop everyone not getting COVID, it, it'd be like stopping everyone getting the cold. Like, it's just not something you can kind of put life on hold for. Illness is a part of life, you know? And if COVID is still very bad and on a pandemic level in your country, then yes, it's good to get rid of a pandemic. But, um, yeah, so I'm not going to die from COVID. Statistically speaking, probably not. I don't know you. I don't know your health history. But just statistically speaking, if you're a, the average person, no. Like, yo, wear your masks in places where you need them. It's just that the UK is like, we're kind of, you know, we're beyond that. If you still want to wear a mask, go, go for it. I'm not. I'll tell you why. I, uh, one, it's not law in the UK anymore, nor is it uh, anything. I just had COVID. I'm not going to catch it again. I just recovered from COVID. I'm not going to give it anyone again. I am in a position where I have like that, you know, like I'm not in a position where I'm at risk of giving or receiving COVID. So at which point I, I'm not, you know, it's like, you know, and, and because it's not law in the UK, but if you're in a place, you think, the thing is right after I got, here's the thing, right after I got COVID and recovered, it was still law. So guess what? Despite the fact that I was still good, I still wore the mask because I like, even though I knew it, it's law. You should do it. You follow the fucking law, you know? But, um, you know, I'm just still despite this, still despite this, I am very happy that the world seems to be going back to normal. But in my selfish social media brain, I'm not because, oh Lord, everyone's busy again. You know, it's like, I remember like every time I got in a taxi and they'd be like, oh, how did the pandemic, because I say I'm self-employed. Because I don't like telling people what I do, just generally speak. I don't like going into taxi driving like, I'm a YouTuber. I don't like telling taxi drivers I'm a YouTuber. Because it, it, it's just awkward. So I was like, you know. Um, I remember like, be, they always ask you when you say you're self-employed. They go, oh, how did the pandemic affect you? Because a lot of small businesses were the people that suffered. And I always feel really bad when I have to go, honestly, mate. It was the best year of my life in terms of what I do. I've never had a year like that and I will likely never have another one. There's, the world won't be like that. And it's like, that's a selfish fucking thought, but it's true, man. It's true. Like, I'm not going to lie to him. You know, it, it's it's a true fact and I hate it. I hate it. But I remember saying to people like, I can't lie about this. It makes you feel guilty as fuck, but you can't lie. It's real. You know, COVID was the best year for all of us. But, uh, you know, it's same as like, this is a really fucked up thought that I, I didn't think I was going to confess, but I'm going to do it. I'm not fucked up in like an evil, like I'm not fucking evil, like I'm not mega mind, but you know, like, um, it was like a fucked up thought that I had earlier that I was like, God, social media fucks you. And then this is what I mean. Like I say, I'm not obsessed with numbers. I'm not. But like, even when planning this stream, I titled it what I wanted to title it. And my brain went, yeah, that'll pull views. This stream is not about pulling views. It shouldn't be. It sh it, it's wrong for this stream to be about pulling views. It is genuinely a platform for me to speak about mental health and social media and try and educate people and make people understand me and all this shit. However, despite that, still my brain just goes, that'll juice. It's like, it's an instinct. It's a, it's an, it's a fucking impulse. It's like, you know, it like, your brain can't help but think about it because it becomes your job. And that's the thing. That's another thing that I think... I also didn't like when you see yourself become more and more obsessed with these things. It makes you feel bad, you know. It, it you just start to feel bad about it, you know. I don't know. It's just you know. I'm gonna tell you about it. It's, it's natural to think that way. Of course it is. Like I'm not. I, I I'm sure it's like every creator that's ever uploaded. Uh, fucking. I'm sorry. With a, with a sad picture of their face. Every YouTuber apology video ever. Look, look it, it, go to a YouTuber that's done an apology video. 
and sort their channel by most viewed, guarantee you that shit juiced. Because that's how, the thing is, the internet fuels itself off of this sort of shit. You know, like, look, I'm, if I go on Logan Paul's channel, I go sort by most popular. So sorry is the seventh, right? The seventh. PewDiePie. PewDiePie. He, his might be, he's been uploading for years, so, you know. Uh, no, but actually, I, I can't find the apology, but I, what I did find was, uh, was, uh, deleting my channel, which is, again, the same sort of idea I'm talking about, which is, like, the idea that, um, you know. You know, it's like the idea that, like, <laughs> Robo, <laughs> fuck off, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Wait, but, but, um, um, <laughs> fuck, um, you know, it's like the internet is like, you know, it, these shit, these things do well, and it's such a shame, such a shame. It's like a shame that, like, these things pull views. Of course they do, though, like, like, of course they do, because people get interested. Like, you know, you can, it, you can guarantee that everyone who read my title today was like, I wonder what's wrong with Jack. I better go listen to go find out. And that's why we had like way more viewers about for the first five minutes and everyone found out I was okay and just going to speak about some stuff. And then, because like, that's the way it is. But I think it's the thing, I, I don't know. I feel like YouTubers are scared to speak about numbers because it looks bad. And I admit, I, I don't feel great doing it. But I kind of wanted to talk about how social media is so oriented around it it's hard not to have a brain that's thinking about them, at least in my experience. And that's, I think, one of the things. I was saying to a, a friend of mine the other night, like, I have for the past week been unable to think about anything but what this next video is gonna be. I've not been able to think about a single other thing. Not a single thing. My brain, every waking second, and, and I've been forgetting to do shit I need to do because my brain's so occupied. Admittedly, that's part, that's part me. It's part me. I am... Um, you know, because I have a very ruminating brain. I was worried. No, I mean, it's natural. A title like that, I get why some people would have been worried. It's very difficult to, to title a stream like this and it not come off like I'm struggling. Which I'm not going to pretend like I'm not. I am, I'm, I'd am. i say I'm more anxious than I've been in a long time. Uh, I've not been sleeping very well. Uh, you, you know, I could sit down and, like, and complain and be like, mm, my life, my life suck. Like, no, it doesn't. It doesn't suck at all. But um, I realize my mental health is at a, not maybe a low point, but a lower point. Purely because um, of the stress of expectation what, that I put on myself, but also the way the internet kind of feeds into that. You know, if you can... If you have the brain that can kind of filter that out, the way, like, YouTube Studio goes, like, you must think... And here's another thing. Here's another platform that's fucking with creators. Don't know if any creators have spotted this. Instagram, really, everyone wants to take on TikTok right now. Don't know if you know that. Uh, all the uh, Western platforms fucking hate TikTok because it's dominating. And it's a great platform. I really actually like TikTok. Um, but it is... Uh, every fucking Western social media hates it. So, YouTube introduces shorts, every channel that posts shorts does amazingly. Uh, Instagram pages, if you are not posting shorts right now, uh, reels, sorry, that's what they call them on Instagram, isn't it? reels, people are just actively losing followers. Like, like anyone I know who has not posted in a little bit and hasn't posted a reel is actively going down in followers. Genuinely going down. And it's like, how do you expect... Bear in mind, we weren't told that. Like, no one no one at Instagram turned around and went, we're going to call your followers if you don't post a reel. I only know that because I spoke to some people who worked out that their followers went back up again after they posted a fucking reel, right? And the thing is, when that's not explained to you, and you just... Are you using followers? I think so. I probably. I haven't posted a fucking reel, so I'd only imagine I'm losing followers. You know what I mean? Like, you can only imagine. And the thing is, I look to other people's Instagrams in our community, and it's the same fucking thing. You know, like... You know, if you look at these analytics, you can you can go around and look. It's really not hard. Like, y you will find that people are down. Why? Because Instagram, I from what I can, I doubt that everyone on that platform has just gone. 
I'm going to unfollow all these people. I doubt that. It seems to me like there's something going on behind the scenes. Now, I'm going to get sued if I say that. So I don't know. I'm not saying Instagram are culling followers because that would be legally incorrect of me. However, I've noticed that everyone who isn't posting reels is losing followers. I can't say Instagram are doing that. I can't say that. I don't think legally I can say that. But I can say it definitely looks that way. There's definitely some evidence to suggest that it's those people that are suffering. And when no one is informed that that is the case, you just think, what am I doing wrong? I'm falling off. Again, like it's the same thought. It's like social media, I feel like is made to make you feel like you are like falling off so that you carry on working so you don't. Because if, if creators were made, literally, if creators were made to feel like they were doing well, they wouldn't, they would get complacent and they wouldn't post as much as they do and they wouldn't, they have to be made or, 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 and this is the other thing, or you give them that insane dopamine boost for doing exactly what you want so that then they do more of that thing because you give them that insane boost and dopamine. It's, it's fucking, it feels like it's numbers to play with your fucking brain and it makes me sad. Um... It just makes you overwhelmed. And like, you know, I, I don't dislike Instagram. I, lo I love posting pictures on Instagram. Uh, and I probably will post a reel because the thing is, hey, I want to do well. And I, and, and I don't know. I don't know for a fact, as I say, the reels comment. If I said they're making you lose followers on purpose, no, I did not. That was a slip in my w words. I'm actually saying that the way I've looked at the numbers and researched the people that aren't posting reels definitely are losing the followers. However, it must be, they must be getting a follow, guys. ha. <laughs> You know. The capitalist dream, brothers. You know. Um, but yeah, no, I, I feel like social media companies definitely have put their um, creators on a back burner. I'd say in my experience, and this isn't just because I'm on Twitch right now and looking to like big them up. In my experience, unironically, I would say Twitch have done for me quite a good job at looking after me. I would say, out of all the platforms I'm on. Um, I'm sure there'll be people that disagree with me, but in my experience, at least. But, you know, everyone's experience is different. Um, Jack, try not to get sued. Of course I'm getting, trying not to get fucking sued. What? Someone in chat, like, this guy's trying not to get sued. Lol. Bro. Bro. No. It was January. I can't afford a lawsuit. But, yeah, if you, if you see Jack Manifold reels popping up, um... In fact, you might see one today because I had a TikTok idea and I might just d double post. Who knows? Um, but yeah, yeah. So it's March. No, no, I was, it was just January. It was just, it was, I know it's March. 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 I, uh, this guy knows it's March. This guy knows it's months. I'm saying it was not that long ago, January. Uh, I know it's March. I know it's March. I know the fucking calendar. It goes June next and then fucking August. Okay, anyway. Women's History Month. Wow, that's sick. I didn't know there was a Women's History Month. Do we have one in the UK? I feel like when, when it is a History Month, we don't really... I feel like I don't see much of it in the UK. Oh, oh yeah, it is in the UK. Yeah, it's Women's History Month right now. I don't feel like you hear about these things. What about July? Conspiracy. David Attenborough vibes. This fucking man does not know the dates of the year. And that is very sad. I'm going to look at an alligator or something fucking strange. And that will be good. There. That, that's not actually how it sounds. Oh, I remember what my TikTok idea was now. It was, it was impressions. I've got it. I've got it in my brain. You'll see it. It'll be funny. Um... Yeah. It's March month. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they should be getting a ship this month. The first lot. Obviously, if there's a, a redrop, they might get shipped a little bit later. But, um... Yeah, no. Yeah, no. Well, I'm a girl from the UK and didn't know that. Exactly, exactly. It's like, I don't feel like our history months are particularly pushed around. Um, But, yeah, yeah. I, I think the reason I wanted to speak about all that today was just to kind of let people in on how I've been feeling. And the kind of, like, I feel like people always talk about social media for, like, being in the public eye is really bad. And people judge you and people hate on you and you cancel culture. And, and like, 
Public opinion's never been something that I've been stressed about. Uh, what stresses me is the pressure that comes from platforms, not directly, but from the way they display and make you, the way they value and display your success to you applies this insane pressure that for someone like me, who's a bit of a perfectionist and suffers with quite bad anxiety, doesn't work. Doesn't, it doesn't work for me mentally. Twitch, the reason I think I like Twitch is because Twitch is the one of the only platforms that doesn't really do that. Um, you know, like some, uh, I've kind of came to terms with the fact that some streams do better than others and I'm very much in control of that, you know. I'm in control, to a degree, of how well a stream does. Uh, there's no real algorithm like YouTube where like, it's kind of up to like, a few factors. Twitch is just kind of like, it's a cool idea, at the right time, it'll do well. It's basically that simple. Um, you know, so, um, you know, I think that's why I enjoy it so much. Um... You said you couldn't get the merch. Hey, if you missed out the first time, maybe it'll come back. Just keep your eyes and wallets ready. I feel wrong promoting merch in this stream. Sorry, someone mentioned it. I'm not going to... That's the last time I mentioned that. I've been staying away from pushing anything this stream. Subs, the lot. I'm, I'm not pushing anything. But yeah. No, I appreciate you being here. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I really wanted to speak about. And I don't know there is. I, I, I think... I know this is a shorter stream. Yeah, th th that's Ro Rob's fucking right. I tell you what, if you want to know a fucking genius, if you want to genuinely hear the words of a fucking genius when it comes to this topic, listen to fucking Rob o Funny. <laughs> genuinely, Rob, I see your tweets about like, because Rob, you kind of quit content creation, right? Um, and you explained your reasons and shit. And this guy, you get it. You fucking get it, dude. I, I feel like you get it. Um, through through a lot of reasons, I think your opinions are different to mine. But uh, but but overall, I think you you know how to fucking talk um, about this shit. Um, genuinely, Robo, you make some good points. Um, I, and I think what you said there was fucking huge. Like YouTube doesn't want to conform to the creative needs of creators; they want you to conform to the algorithm. It's true. It's true. It's true. Um, you know, I don't hate YouTube as a platform. Uh, and ultimately, I would actually like to get closer to them. To not only learn more about their platform, because uh, I do feel like I, I I've always said I have a content brain, not a YouTube brain, because they're different things. Um, and I would like to get close to them also because I'd like to express directly to them the thoughts I have about this stuff. Um, but you know, um, I'm not, I don't hate them in any way. This isn't me shitting on YouTube um, at all. It's just my problems with it um, that I wanted to voice because they have, for the most part, been what's causing my Slightly shaky mental health at the moment. Um, you yeah. know, how did you feel about becoming a meme? Would you say I did become a meme? I feel like the Whopper meme was kind of was. I don't think I've ever became a mainstream meme. Like, um, you know, not not to mention some, you know, he who should not be named. But like when Carson became a meme, it was very mainstream. You know, it wasn't just in his community or anything. Like Carson was like that. Carson meme was huge of him crying. Um, I don't know if the Whopper meme was quite mainstream. I feel like it was pretty isolated to our... Oh, the Garfield SRS or slash J1. Yeah, true. I forgot about that. Forget I became a meme. You have a lot of TikTok audios. Yeah, I do forget that, to be fair. There are there are a good few TikTok audios. Um, Lemony Lemonade. Gee, I own so much Lemony... Gee, you know when you told me you and Will used to order um, Lemony Lemonade to your house? I basically took that advice, realized I could also order a massive fuck-off crate of lemony lemonade, and accidentally bought two of them, and now I've got about 48 cans. This is my second today. Cheers. Mm. Yeah. Hey. Lend me a lemony lemonade. Come over. Hang out, G. Right now. No, I'm joking. I, I, I'm so busy today. I don't have time for G, Nelly. Um... <laughs> But, um, yeah, no, uh, being a meme has never uh, bothered me uh, at all, I wouldn't say. Uh, I enjoy it, in fact. I've always been very big into memes. Um, the people I... Fucking legend. Sorry, I got a message from, from someone just who's watching the stream who just, like, just, just says a few nice words. And it's just, it means a lot, man. I ain't got no time for your jacket being... Gee, why the fuck did when I, I was at your house literally like three days? Why did you not tell me that my jacket was at your house and I could have taken it home? This is the thing, right? Chat, I'm sorry I'm going a bit off topic here. It was bound to happen. The fact that I've stayed on topic for like nearly an hour is insane. Um, 
But I left a coat at G's months ago, like six months. And every time I've been to her house since she never reminds me. And I realize that's probably on me, but I'm blaming her. It's easy to blame other people for my problems. That's why I'm blaming social media, guys. It's all my problems in my head. Um, you hardly saw me. You literally sat there. We 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 had a chat. Um, but hey, you know, I ain't gonna I ain't gonna blame you, G. Apart from my will. Um, but yeah, no, I appreciate all the people in chat saying that like take the break and stuff. The thing is, I don't want to. Like, I'm talking about my mental not being great, but the thing is, the thing that would make me feel better is feeling productive again and feeling like I'm working towards my goals and dreams, which I feel like I've been unable to do for a month. Uh, it's mainly anxiety from that, but I realize that anxiety is 100% magnified by um, the uh, sort of anxiety of these platforms, um, which I definitely, I understand that they can't change YouTube to work for me. And obviously, ha showing the numbers that way really helps with the people who want to play the game because it's it's very descript and helps you a lot. But I suffer badly with it. I don't find that enjoyable. I won't overwork myself. Uh, I I'm trying to find a better work life balance. You know, I, I I'm I'm okay with that. Um, but yeah, when pe people coming in here saying I'm doing great and shit, it really does mean a lot because ultimately, again, I hold myself to very high standards, and despite everything I've achieved in the last year. I feel like I could still do more, which is a good thing. It means I, I, I'm i always fucking pushing, but it also means that, like, when are you satisfied? You know, it's the fucking, it's the Hamilton effect. You know, the, you will never be satisfied. It's, it's that shit. It's literally the fucking Hamilton effect. It's like when you, uh, when the sky's, when the sky's the limit, where do you stop sort of thing? You know, when, when are you satisfied? Um, no, no, the sky's the goal, not the sky's the limit. Like, the sky feels like the goal. Uh, you know what I mean? As Tyler, the creator, once famously said, for you, the sky is the limit. For us, the sky is just what we stand on. The problem with that is... I don't think you're very happy, bro. I'm not gonna lie. Um, but yeah, I'm glad you guys came and listened. I was really anxious about starting this stream. I'm not... Uh, there's a level at which I kind of like... Is it a bad thing to be this open? You know, is it a bad thing to talk about? Like, I feel like... Some people are very against, like, content creators kind of spilling the beans on, like... Being, like, like... That YouTube is a game and like like and and there's algorithms and like but I feel like that shit's out there and it's public And if you really want to hear about it people have spoken about it on podcasts and stuff I don't think this is me spilling insider secrets or anything weird. This is out there and I'm sure you guys knew this I'm sure you guys knew this already, but I just wanted to give my opinion on it because I feel like I I've spent a fuck ton of time thinking about it recently and um you know, it means a lot that you guys um, say you're proud and all this. It really, like, it, it. it's nice to feel loved. And and genuinely, I see a lot of really nice messages about the content I make and stuff. Uh, you know. Um, you know. Uh, I just, yeah. It's, it's cool. It's very cool. I really, I mean, you know, I feel like, you know, I'm in a very good position right now. Um... In, it, it, where like I feel like I've got a very good community. I feel like there's some really shitty communities out there. Like there's YouTubers with big audiences, sure, but their communities are just. And I feel like I don't have that. You know, even even you know, people say what they want about the MCYT community, and there's definitely some shitty things. And I think part part of it's luck. Um, and but I think I've I the the side of it that watch me are, of the side that I am happy with. Um, but equally, I'm not. As I said, I think part of that's luck in the fact that um, I think there's certain clicks within this community that um, I feel like the one thing about I, I don't know why I'm speaking about stand culture here because but, um, because I don't find that my audience is bad for this, but I'm going to speak about stand culture as a whole and why I'm grateful for the audience I have because I don't feel like you guys are like this, but I see it in the communities around me, so I think that's why it's always been something I've I've been careful not to try and encourage, and that is like as a um, I, I, the internet's proved it's fickle. Even stands, who people always say the good thing about stands is they're really dedicated, and they are, and they'll, they'll watch everything you do, and they'll buy all the things you want to promote. And blah, blah, blah. Stands are great. They're lovely people who genuinely, usually care a lot about the people. But also, I feel like the one thing about a stand culture that is um, a problem is the kind of um, sort of like almost cultish behavior when it comes to like the rules there's like a social conduct that must be upheld and the second that's broken by someone within the community or the creators it's no it's it's not 
there's no room for forgiveness for certain people. There are for certain people. And for certain people, it, forgiveness is given almost at the drop of a hat. If they utter the word, sorry. But um, other people don't seem to get that opportunity and are dropped like that. I've seen creators who had stan audiences who they do like one bad thing. And I'm not saying the thing they did isn't bad. I'm not saying that. I know people who've done bad things. But they get dropped like that as if like they could never recover. As if like because they've done one bad thing, they're a terrible person. It's like... No, people are multifaceted. I've made mistakes. I can mention plenty of mistakes I've made. Uh, it seems that whenever I've mis made mistakes, I've always been one of those people who I genuinely apologize. And thank God, I, I feel like, again, I have a level ahead of community where my community, if I genuinely apologize, which I have done, um, people are willing to go, yeah, he just made a mistake. He wasn't intending to hurt or upset anyone. And I don't feel like other people have that um, liberty. Um, and then as well as that, I feel like certain people um, are just hated because they're hated. Um, I think I saw this a lot. For, uh, I'm, like, I'm, to, to name names to defend one person who I think um, who genuinely doesn't deserve it is Nikki. I think um, she is one of those people who is hated on for the sake of being hated on at this point. It's like a bandwagon. It's like certain people just decided they hate her, which is like natural as fuck. There's, pl there's plenty of people on the internet who probably hate me. I actually know that for a fact. I remember seeing some tweet once about someone being like, this dude, I hate this dude. This manifold dude suck. Like, it's natural. Not everyone who sees me is going to like me. I've, like, you know, like, to put this into perspective, millions of people will pass by me every month on the internet. And not every one of those people is going to go, this guy's great. It's impossible. But I feel like within this community, uh, someone decided they didn't like something Nikki's done. And I'm not going to, you know, I, I don't think she's really done anything that's fucking criminal. And she's, and definitely when she's made mistakes, she's apologized for them. But I feel like, again, she's one of these people that wasn't given the liberty of apologizing. Uh, or the, the, the sorry, the, the right to forgiveness. That's more, she was allowed to apologize, but she wasn't given the right to forgiveness. And um, for someone who I genuinely do believe has no malice in them as a person and is unable to intentionally upset anyone, totally capable of mistakes um, and has made them, but you know, uh, not what I'm, I'm not here to defend mistakes. I'm here to say when people apologize, I think most people give them the benefit of the doubt. But I think a lot of people in the community clung onto it and like Nikki's, whatever she is and then they're like they'll tweet like this girl's a bitch and then people who don't really know will be like why is this girl a bitch and they'll just go she did this no evidence no reference to the fact that she's apologized and, and improved it's just like she's bad and it's like oh guess she's bad and the thing is the thing i feel like about stan culture is you kind of gotta adhere to the group opinion there's no like you gotta adhere to the group opinion or you're out and it's like She's hated, so if you don't, it, like, hey, it's like the fucking DNI if you're a fucking schlatt stan. Shit. It's like, if you like a thing I don't like, we can't talk. It's like echo chamber bullshit. Um, you know, and that's the worst of it. And I think uh, there's certain people who just, like, five people decide they don't like them. And then they make that the opinion. And that, so everyone else decides they don't like them, despite the fact they couldn't give a shit. They couldn't give a shit. They probably watched Nikki in fucking private and like, yeah, they couldn't give a shit. But they're, they're, they're tweeting about it. Why? Because it gets the fucking, the rest of the stands to like it. Like, I'm going to tweet, <laughs> bitch. Because like, everyone's going to like it because like, I, I fit in. And like, the same thing happens with people to like as well. And this is the thing. There's also then a secondary group. And I think this group is just as fucking bad. Of people who, like, for example, the, the person who kind of, like, there's, there's people who just get away with everything and are the best and are the biggest in uh, amongst the stands. And there's a group that's like, they're so overrated. They're so overrated. And it's fitting with that group. You've got to be of the opinion that we support the little guy. And they're overrated. And you know what? We like Schlack because he's not a bad guy. And it's like, but then it's just performative all over again because then they're just like, you know, it's, you know, it's like, it's like, it, 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 I I think for one, I am genuinely the reason I don't suffer with this is one because I think I've cultivated a very good community. I think the the manifold Twitter, the the, the manifold stands are generally, from what I can see, the funnier and <laughs> more level-headed of uh, the greater community, and I appreciate that a lot. However, I also think the reason I've never suffered any backlash from the wider community is one because I don't think I've made any I don't think I've made any mistakes. I'm sure this will get me in a bit of trouble, but I don't care because I'm saying what I mean. Um. Um, however, I think the other reason is I'm not the biggest and I'm not the smallest. I'm big enough where I interact with their faves. However, I'm not really big where I have all these shit tons of antis because the popular opinion is to go against the popular thing. It's like, it's like the new cool is being the person who hates the popular things. Like, I hate pop music because I'm alt. And it's like, 
you can hate pop music. I'm not saying you, you have to love it, but there's like, people who do it to fit in, you know? And I think I sit in a very happy middle ground where I've never upset anyone, so I'm not the cool guy to hate. I'm not too big to be the cool guy to hate. I'm not too small to be ignored. It's like it's like I'm right in this 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 sweet spot, the Goldilocks zone. Um the only jack antis are manifold mods, genuinely. But my only people who hate me is my mods. Um, yeah, I feel like I sit in the Goldilocks zone where I have my own community and then the wider community I sit in the Goldilocks zone of. Um, and, you know, very happy for that. Happy that the wider community likes me. It, it, it's good. It, I don't, you know, as much as I say the hate doesn't get to me, I still like, I prefer the fact that I don't get much. Uh, but when I do get it, it doesn't bother me, you know, that's what I'm saying. But, um, you know, I like the fact that the wider community will show up when I do bigger events. The more dedicated community will show up to everything, but the wider community, which there always is, every YouTuber has really dedicated viewers and then a wider set of viewers that only show up when they do something really fucking cool. I respect everyone equally. You don't have to watch everything I do, but I really appreciate the people who do. You know. The antis are trying to say you're based. I'm, I'm, I'm on no one's side. I'm not going, <laughs> antis, you hate stands? Good. I'm not saying stands. Good. I'm like saying there are bad sides of every fucking community and it's usually when you have... You know the fucking the the fucking Sith deal Sith deals Siths deal in absolutes quote. It's like it's like these people that are just their opinions are completely dictated by the group as a whole, and there's no subtlety. It's not like this person did a kind of bad thing. It's like for example, there's there's artists I listen to, I like their music, but I don't necessarily agree with them as a person. Like Morrissey, for example, I'm a huge Smiths fan. Morrissey's a cunt. I don't like him. He's a bad guy. Um, you know, like I I don't like Morrissey. Don't stop, but you know, it's like, the thing is, I can, I don't have to then boycott everything he does and, and, and tweet about him saying how much of a dickhead he is, blah, 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 I can just go, yeah, I like his music. I think he's a very talented singer and uh, writer. However, I don't like his political opinions. I think they're terrible and I think he's a bit of a moron. That's a completely valid opinion. No, I, and I feel like um, there's, uh, there's uh, these sort of nuanced sort of opinions are kind of ruined. Um... You know, you know. Same with, but with Cave Town, I don't know anything about Cave Town. I, I like their music. I know their music. This is the thing. I, I actually intentionally don't tend to look into many artists because I uh, know sometimes I'm kind of like, you know, it's just better to be ignorant with this thing, these things. Which I, I never usually, I never usually say. I never usually say it's better to be ignorant about anything. But I think with musicians, as long as you're not financially supporting some fucking villain, I don't know. It's a difficult, it's, it's a moral dilemma where it's like financial support of someone who's like morally corrupt. It's like, it's like when it's like someone like Gary Glitter, who's like an actual pedophile. It's like, mm, I feel kind of bad listening to his music if it supports him with royalties, you know? Um, you know. I mean, it's Steve Lacey, Steve Lacey's, oh, it's good music, man. Um, but yeah, artists always be up to bad shit, bro. Yes, yes. I've always said this, uh, for some reason, uh, musicians are the only people who can... And this sounds absurd, but but genuinely it's true. Beat women and get away with it. You can you can you know if you have a wife and you're a successful musician, you can fucking punch her as much as you like, and you are still gonna have a career. It's fucked. It's a fucking really but time and time again, this is proven. John Lennon, Chris Brown, XXX Tentacion. Um, you know, I, I mean I could sit here. And, you know, same with actors. Less so, though, with actors, like, look at pe like, th the backlash with actors. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing, right? If I'm a director and I want to make a film and an actor's done a shitty thing, there's going to be public backlash if I put them in my movie. And as someone who hasn't done a shitty thing, I'm not going to put them in my movie. However, a musician is, usually speaking, independent. Apart from their label. But their label works behind the scenes. Not many people w know, like, I like I, I, I know of Ariana Grande. I can tell you what label she signed with, for example. Uh, not many people know. Well, if she was in a movie, I could tell you what the fucking director was. You know, it's like, n the only person, like, an artist is not going to stop working just because they're in trouble. You know? Johnny Depp is an example, kind of. Um, no, actors definitely, I don't think it's the same with actors. I think any conventional celebrity can get away with more than the average person. Um, but then again, that's not true because they undergo more scrutiny. I feel like the average person probably would just never get found out. As opposed to like a celebrity who, um, you know, probably will get found out, but no one cares. But you know, it's... Um, 
I feel like Bojack Horseman talks about cancel culture in Hollywood in a, in a realistic way. Yeah, I think Bojack Horseman did a good job of, 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 of dealing with that topic. Bojack Horseman's very good. It's actually very... If you're interested in that sort of, like, culture, it's, it's very good to watch. Um... Everyone kind of overlooks it as well. It's not something that's spoken about too much. Um, I don't feel like... I don't feel like it's spoken about too much. Oh god, athletics too. Ah, again! Again! More so, but less... I mean, look at like Mason Greenwood, for example. He was obviously... He's been dropped from his team and all sorts, you know. It's like, you know, he did a terrible thing and, and now he's kind of been kicked out of the team and stuff. So... I hear you, but I, I'm not in full agreement. Um... I think artists are the genuine only time that I cannot really think of anyone who's lost their career over it. The only time I can think about it is when someone's been in a, in a band and the other band members go, that's fucked up, we're not working with you anymore. The industry didn't kick them out, their bandmates did. That's a different thing. Um, you know. Maybe American football. I don't know much about American football, though, so, you know. It's something about the traditional celebrity minds that it's a mindset that brings up the idea that they're untouchable. I've always thought about that. Um, and part of me thinks it might be true, but part of me doesn't. Part of me just thinks, are these things just as common amongst everyday people? But because everyday people don't undergo the same sort of investigation and scrutiny, do they go under the radar? You know? That's what I always think about. Like... You know, think of all, you know, I think that's something I thought about. Is it, like, for example, not to make it dark, but um, there's obviously a lot of celebrities that have been outed as pedophiles, right? Lots. Kevin Spacey, you know, uh, fucking uh, Epstein. I mean, he was, I mean, he was convicted twice. Uh, I mean, let's think. Uh, uh, no, Cosby was still, or oh, 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 sexual crimes. Um, you know, like any sort of like sex offense. Plenty, plenty, plenty of people who have uh, been exposed for that in the sort of conventional celebrity sphere. However, what I've always wondered is, is it the fact that, yeah, celebrities feel immune, they feel like they're on top of the world, I'm going to go do some fucked up shit because I can't be touched. Or, is it the fact that in everyday life, there's just as many people out there doing this shit, but they don't undergo the, the same um, sort of investigation and scrutiny, so it doesn't go noticed. And you do get people arrested, because obviously some people get caught out. That's the way it works. But I always wondered. I always wondered whether they're just more common in everyday life than we realize, because there's not that level of investigation. Um, I, I'd say it's probably a good combination of both. I'm just curious which one's the bigger factor. It's a scary thought. It's a scary thought, but it's one I remember thinking. Um... I, I think it's it is definitely a mix of both. I just um yeah. It's scary to think it's common. Hundred percent, hundred percent, terrifying, terrifying. But I think um I know plenty that haven't been convicted in through my own personal life growing up. Um, plenty of people who I would consider, and I think the law would consider to be pedophiles, who um haven't been arrested and same as like even some of these celebrities and youtubers never get arrested they just get cancelled and here's the thing you only hear about an everyday guy when he gets arrested you don't hear about everyday people when they get cancelled they don't get cancelled uh this is the other thing these celebrities uh aren't often arrested you know kevin spacey's still kicking he's just not working edp 445 i mean he fucking came back to tiktok you see that shit you know how did that guy not go to jail how did that guy not go to jail genuinely You know, I think it's, um, I think for regular people, it's the support system they have for uh, that as well. It's, um, you know, Drake Bell too. I thought he did. I thought he did go to court at least. Like it was acknowledged by the law, you know? XXX Tentacion was proven innocent. I don't know anything about the ins and outs of that situation. I just saw, you know, pictures and shit. But yeah, you know, there's plenty of people. Um, you know, I'll move on from the topic. I don't, I, I realize it's a little bit heavy for some people. I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, that wasn't the intention of this stream. It's just shit that comes up. Oh shit, why am I trending? Um, no, I, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm not, 
opening Twitter right now. I, sorry, I, I opened Twitter on like, like, I don't know why I did it. I just clicked on it by accident. And then I saw it was trending. I was like, ah, it's just fucking, I'm not, I'm not looking. I'm not looking. I'm not looking. Um, <laughs> but, um, no, 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 no. Like, yeah, yeah, you know. But equally, I, you know, I find criminals are more common in life than you think. I've told this story before, but I, I, you know, I went to breakfast once with a murderer. And was told after the fact that I went to breakfast with this guy that he was a murderer who had been paid. I didn't I don't know why I laugh. It's because it's so fucking absurd to me that this actually happened. I didn't even I didn't know who he was. Sorry, th this makes it sound bad. Um, I went for breakfast. A guy came and joined us at our table who knew someone I was with. Says hi. Completely pleasant person. Did, I mean, in my experience with them at least. When I was speaking to them, they were completely fine. I didn't pick up a bad vibe at all. They were funny, they were fine. Find out afterwards from the person who knew them. I'm like, oh yeah. Uh, no, he was paid to deliver a bomb uh, by some guy. Uh, sorry, he was paid by some guy's, some woman's husband to deliver a bomb to their house, killing the wife. Um, and a genuine true story. Um, and I didn't find out till afterwards. And then equally, my NCS leader um, told us that he was an ex-gang member because they gave us like an anti-knife crime speech, like don't carry knives and shit. You know, to basically stop kids from carrying knives. It's quite a problem in the UK. And he basically told us that he was an ex-gang member. And he kind of gave us like an anti-gang talk. And like, I, he definitely implied. And he'd been in charge of this for like four weeks. Um, and he was like kind of like the guy mainly in charge of this group of kids. That he was the guy they sent to hurt people. Which in my mind was... S stabbing up some, some fools. You know, like... <laughs> you know. And never once did these people ever threaten or intimidate or or make me feel scared they were perfectly pleasant people who were in no way threatening to us um but it's crazy what people are capable of that's i think um that's what i think that's what i think i think it's fucking terrifying hitman no i don't think he'd ever done it before i think he was just like you know what i feel like i could do that Reform is possible too. Another thing. Reform is possible. I genuinely believe that. This is another thing I never liked about cancel culture fully. I think there's people that shouldn't be allowed um, platforms of influence. I think that's true. You know, people like EDP, 445, and, and, and people like Jimmy Savile and stuff like that. Platforms of influence are terrible for those people. But people who have made mistakes in the past, um, the, you know, reform's possible. You know. I'm, I've... I, from experience of being a human being, can tell you, I do not like, or I don't hate, I don't, I don't think I've ever been an evil, horrible fucking person, but I do not like traits of the person I was four, five years ago. Completely normal. <laughs> so fucking normal. Um, so, you know. Reform isn't possible for everyone. No, I'm not saying that. Some people are sick in a way that can't be fixed. Uh, but some people can. People that dig up past things are so dumb. I would mostly agree. I, I think certain things are worth mentioning. But I think if it's um, something very old um, that someone's like already held. I feel like accountability is important. Um, and I think, yeah, definitely calling people out on... Um, calling people out on what they've done... Uh, I'm trying to think how to word this because I, I realize this could come off wrong. It's like, like, what am I trying to say? What's the word I'm trying to say? It's like, um, I think, what am I trying to say? What's the word? It's like, I don't think digging up things from the past is intrinsically dumb, but I think there are certain things that are dumb to dig up. That's what I'm trying to say. There's certain things between, um, yeah, it's basically I think people should search for proof that people have changed someone did something in the past that you think is fucked up And you think it looks like they've changed. I think searching for proof of that is good um, And I think if there's no proof of that then like asking someone like hey you did this in the past and uh, I don't think you're a bad person. I think you've probably changed but have you if you know Maybe getting proof of that is usually good um, but there's also other things that I think are kind of beyond that and Certain people are dangerous when in a position of influence um, and therefore shouldn't be allowed it. Um, you know. You know. 
That's what I mean. Do you believe in karma? Um, not in like uh, some force of nature sense, but in the way that I think. Uh, I think uh, doing shitty things and eliminating the trust of people. And I've seen this happen, so I, I, I kind of do have evidence for this happening to people. Doing shitty things and eliminating the trust of the people around you and public opinion, if you're someone in the public eye, will come to bite you in the ass after a bit of time. Even if at the time backstabbing and sta snaking is the thing that's keeping you afloat, when it comes to when that stops, no one's got your back. That's how I would say it. I don't, I, I don't, that, that is... That is in in the definition of what karma is karma, but I wouldn't say it's like some like otherworldly force like people are talking about. Um, yeah. I don't know. Best way to drop a toxic friend. Simple as that. Don't talk to them no more. People, you don't owe people your time. You don't owe people explanations and shit. You don't owe people anything. I mean, obviously, if people have done good things to you, I suppose, you know, you don't, you don't necessarily owe them, but, like, I had an issue like this once. I was speaking about it the other day. I'm not going to name this person, but, um, I knew a person who, throughout the time I knew them, was incredibly, incredibly good to me. Really good friend who gave a hell of a lot, never asked for anything, never, ever asked for anything. And then it came out that they'd been consistently quite shitty. To, um, specifically, they're just kind of a bit of a misogynist. And it was a situation where it was like, I cut them off. And they kind of messaged me and it's like, hey, what's wrong? What did I do? And it was really hard for me to be like, here's this person that's treated me with all this fucking kindness. All this kindness. And I could not say a bad thing about. But equally, I cannot surround myself around and want to support. And it was this awful fucking situation and still to this day it hurts my heart to have like had to have cut them off but i know i did the right thing like i know i did the right thing but it it hurts because to me to me personally they were the kindest and nicest person um and it's another again it's another situation where i'm like um good for actually cutting them off no i hey at one of my um this is a bit of a trigger warning thing i'm gonna speak about it anyway um but again i i spoke about you know um, it's not very graphic, but it, it does revolve itself around uh, another sort of like sexual assault, assault situation. But I had a friend um, who I'd known my whole life since I was three years old. Something crazy. Something crazy. Something crazy, crazy, crazy. Known him a very, very long time. And um, we were never the. He was never my closest friend at all. But I had um, a big group of friends at this at this time in my life. Uh, and I, uh, this, you know, what? I'm not, I'm not gonna tell much about this story, actually. No offense. I, I know I just started it. Um, but, um, I think the, the moral of the story is very good, but out of respect for the person, um, the victim of the situation, I, I feel like if they ever saw this stream, even though I'm not going to name anyone or make it clear at all who it was, they're not going to like me speaking about it, so I'm just going to cut it off. I'm just, I'm not, I'm not going to. Um, but yeah, no, long story short, I, I had a very, I, I knew a guy for a long time. He did a bad thing, and that was a very, it was a bit, it was like a big turning point for me where I realized, like, the people who are good to you and closest to you aren't necessarily good people. Um, and, it, and you kind of have to be prepared to, um, like, let your own feelings towards a person go when they do something so bad. That's basically what I'm saying. But I'm not... I don't want to go into any more detail than that. Because I feel like it's a very important thing to speak about. But I'd feel wrong uh, speaking about it. I, I, I kind of had this moment of judgment where I was like, actually, it's not right to speak about this. Maybe I'll speak about it one day when I got a bit more clarity on whether it'd be okay or not. But I... I, I it feels wrong. I'd feel wrong doing that. Um, yeah. Also, shit situation. Um, hmm. You know, but yeah, cutting, but no, as I was about to say, cutting people off is hard, but if you, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you it's easy, but if you want my advice on how to do it, just genuinely do exactly that. Cut them off. Don't speak to them. Don't explain it to them. They don't owe, they, you don't owe them an explanation. Just do it. There's no need. If it's, if they've not done anything objectively wrong, it's a bit different. It's kind of like, 
if you're with a person, it's kind of translates over to dating as well. And in dating, this this is definitely needed. Um, if you're with a person who is trying their best with you and not doing anything objectively wrong, they're just their the way the things they do in their presence around you aren't good for you. Then you you probably do owe them that explanation of it. It's nothing to do with you. You've not done anything wrong. But I can't do this anymore for these reasons. But if it's a shitty thing they've done, if they've genuinely done a shitty, objectively bad thing to you or other people, just cut them off. Like, there's no explanation required. You don't have to. Um, I think it's only really polite to do it when the issue's on your end. When the issue's on your end, I basically, this, this, here it is, here it is. If the issue's on their end, then, no, you don't owe them any explanation. But if the issue's on your end, um, I'd say, okay, you still are in your right to cut people off, if, even if you have an issue on your end, but uh, you probably owe them an explanation in that, in, that, um, in that situation. Like, prioritize yourself, definitely, but um, don't be a dickhead, you know? Make sure people are uh, accounted for in those things. I think, that, I think that's... I'd say that's the, the, the good... Um, what if it's loads of small little things that make you do that feel terrible? Um... It's still probably worth. It depends. Are they things that are genuinely a bit mean and cruel? Or is it just like things that just like don't really work with you? Probably first thing to do is raise them to that person and go like, Hey, this doesn't really work for me. Um, but if you're willing to not do those things around me, then... Or it's, Hey, I'm sorry, this isn't working. Kaput. You know. Well, they don't back off. Just, just ignore them. Like, uh, there's, there's a level at which you just start being rude, you know? They're being rude, not respecting your request to back off. Therefore, if they start coming at you, just don't fucking... Literally, I'm, I'm talking dead donor wall them. IRL, fucking donor wall them. You're the wall, bro. Donor wall them. Genuinely. You're allowed to do that in that position. That's a, that's a real thing you're allowed to do. Like, like, I think people forget that. You're actually allowed to do things that are considered rude when, um, you know... It's for the good of you. And when someone's kind of disrespected you in the first place, I feel like you unlock that pass. Necessary rudeness. That's what it is. Normalize the weighing up the pros and cons of having people in your life? Yeah, 100%. Don't just accept who's in your life. Here's the, here's the crazy fucking thing about life. You're in full control of your life. As much as you don't always feel like it, I definitely suffered with that badly. It took me a long time to realize I was fully in control of my life. And also, I didn't handle it well when I realized I was fully in control of my life. That's a lot of responsibility to put on a person. Especially when they kind of were just doing what people said for a long time. All of a sudden, you put, um, you realize that um, your life's in your control. That's fucking freaky, man. You got a lot of responsibility. I gotta keep myself fed. I gotta keep myself alive. I got it's, it's, it's a basic shit, but when you've relied on other people to do that shit, it's fucking horrifying. It's a scary fucking thought. Um... And um, it does not matter who that person is, family, friend, there is no one in your life you actually have to be attached to at all. At the minimum, at the minimum, right, this is, the, this is it. If you go and have a child with someone and you get divorced, you will probably have to see your ex-partner to some degree for the sake of that child. Even, even if it's just communication to pay them child support, you will probably never cut them off fully from your life. It's like the only time, genuinely, you cannot just cut people completely out of your lives. That and like, you can't stop putting your parents' names on forms. But, you are in complete control of your life. Uh, you fully get to decide, and you are not wrong for doing this, that you can have whoever you want in that life. Or you can strive towards that. I obviously, like, I, I could say I want Barack Obama in my life. It ain't gonna happen. But, like, like you know what I mean? Like, I, I mean, like, I'm in full control to make that choice when the opportunities present themselves. Um, and it, don't get me wrong. It, <laughs> I want Beyonce. I feel that average, Harry. Um, but I, um, personally, I understand. And trust me, I understand um, the feeling of when you realize, like, not feeling like you're in control of your life, and then when you realize you're in control of your life, that was almost worse for me. That was scary. I remember finding the idea that I got to decide, especially because I don't even have a job, I don't have a boss. Most people at least maintain that. They, they can't control their work. They, they can control where they work, and they can control what they do for work, but they can't control how and 
what exactly they work out where I can. I'm, I'm in full control of what I do day to day. And that um, is freeing, but scary. Because all of a sudden, when I start fucking up and not doing well, I've got no one to blame. It's on me. I got to feel that pain, you know, and that's that's hard. Um, especially for me, because I'm, I'm I get so as I say, I'm so failure averse, I, I just, and and so uh, easy, uh, so quick to judge something a failure as well. You know? I'd love to do a podcast. I just um, I don't know what structure I'd do it under, but maybe one day. Hey, I, I I'm not um, it'll happen. It'll happen. I'm sure it will happen one day. Do you have advice on maintaining panic attacks? No, I witnessed someone have a panic attack for the first time not too long ago. Fuck me up. I genuinely, I have never claimed to people to be the, um, because I handle my emotions in maybe not the healthiest way. And that is generally shrouding them under humor or a mask. It's why I, doing the stream, I was a bit anxious to kind of go live and like drop character a little bit. Because like, you know, but, um. Um, I, wa I literally was with someone as they had a panic attack for the first time of the day. Shit freaked me the fuck out. Like, I was like, oh my god, I've never seen someone seem so genuinely helpless. And I'm trying to calm them down, but like, I felt quite powerless to make anything much better. Scary. It was a genuine, um, scary situation to watch. It was, I, I've had one, I thought. And now watching that, I'm not sure I'd ever had one. Because I, I I, think in my life, I've had two things I would consider mild panic attacks. Um, I had one during my English GCSE. Because um, I, and this is again, this is the same thing. I, This is the same thing about YouTube as well that I was on about. Where like, I'm very literal brained. And uh, I feel like schools make you think that you're fucking GCSEs. Which if you're American, they're like your exams to leave school. It's like, it's kind of like you're a... Uh, anyone who kind of gets the... What's the American equivalent of GCSEs? Does anyone kind of know? The SAT? Cool. The SAT. So. Um, same sort of thing. Anyway. I was doing my English one. Never found English particularly easy. Um, always found it quite difficult um, to analyze text and kind of break down. You know, I, I, I found... And, and the crazy thing is to me, though, I think they just teach it poorly. Because the thing is, I am a huge fan film buff and analyst uh and also and you've seen me break down animation and shit on stream i'm very I, I feel like i actually have quite the knack for looking at something and breaking down what makes it work especially when it comes to film but when it comes to text i guess i find that more hard and also if i don't intrinsically get any meaning out of something i'm not gonna be able to write about it and a lot of these texts i found very uninspiring and shit so i found it uh, really, really, really shitty. I got into the exam. I had literally nothing. I, I didn't know what to write about. I didn't know what to write about. I read the question. I'm like, I have nothing. It's one of the ones where like, it's like, read this text. How does the writer make, translate this point across? I'm like, I didn't even get that point from that fucking piece of text. I don't know. And I just sat there and genuinely, I was like, holy shit. My whole GCSE relies on me getting this right now. I've done plenty of papers in the past. I got like one mark off a nine on a paper that I got. Didn't get this paper. So I was like, fuck. I'm fucked. I'm fucked. I'm fucked. Like, I, there's nothing I could do. Nothing. And I just panicked to shit. Like, I remember, I, I never felt more panicked in my life. Like, I couldn't control it. And that was the worst one. And then, <laughs> again, drum my GCSEs. It's why I actually, I, I'm so glad I never sat my A-levels, because I swear I would have had more panic attacks. Because they, I, I, I got, I used to be, like, a kid who, like, preferred exams to, a uh, um, coursework. But that just disappeared the second I, I started doing these. I, um... Um, I, I, uh, was in bed, um, one night. I had my history GCSE the next morning, but I obviously dreamt that I'd missed it. And it was supposed to be the, the day before. Like, I, I, like, ha obviously half fall asleep, and now I thought, shit, that exam was supposed to be yesterday, I didn't go, I haven't sat that exam. Oh my god, I didn't go to my fucking exam. I, 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 did, I, I just skipped it somehow, I fucking forgot. Like, I, I just genuinely thought I'd forgotten to show up. And, like, middle of the night, I had this massive fucking panic, checked my phone and the clock, and was like, <gasps> it's okay. And I calmed down. But, like, there was, like, a five, like, not even five minutes, probably, like, a minute where I just freaked the fuck out. <laughs> like, I did A-levels, but I didn't sit the actual exams because of COVID. Um, uh, they did my mock exams. And luckily, I managed to get through those. Thank God. Um, I did very well in my levels. Thank God. Because of that. Because I didn't have the panic attacks. But, but it's the only time. Um, I It's the only time in my life I've ever really had any. And I don't really think I'll ever have them again. Um, 
I'm not particularly that way inclined. Um, I, I, I feel like the closest I've been in recent memories when I locked myself out of my house. There's that brief moment of panic where I was like, did your A-levels get predicted? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I got my predicted A-levels um, off of mocks. I've done a lot of mocks, so they were, it, it was really easy for them to predict. Um, advice for exams. Um, do a lot of past papers. Um, again, much like YouTube, it's not about what you know. It's not about making... It's like how I say YouTube's not about making good content. It's about uh, playing the game. It's like it's the same with fucking exams. It's not about knowing shit about that subject. It's just about playing the game. It's just about reading those papers, figuring out how to answer those questions and get the marks and then just doing them. Um, did you do any AP or pre-AP classes? I don't even know what that means. I'm sorry. Um, what A-levels did you do? I did physics, maths, and computer science. Um, and so, yeah, I always did very academic subjects, which always um, made me laugh because... Uh, um, Oh, was that? Always made me laugh that uh, I, I I did the, uh, really academic subjects in school. Never did any artsy ones or creative ones. And now I work purely in a creative field. Like I just I just make videos that I think are funny and streams that I think are, like I, I purely work in entertainment. I think it's hilarious, hilarious, so funny. Computer science kind of helped me because like I got a nice PC set up and it's because I know how to build good PCs and shit. You know I know a lot about computers. It helps, but. Um... APs or advanced placements? Then no, I don't think I did. Did you find me a talking pen song? That's funny. Um, I love maths is just so hard. Yeah, it was. Even I find it difficult, and I found GCSE maths a fucking cakewalk. I got a nine without even trying. Uh, but I, A level was like, ooh, it's kind of difficult. You could have done an A-level in esports. That's sick. Is that a thing they do? That's fucking sick, by the way. Had no idea they did that. That's fucking wild. Hmm. All right. Well, I think we've been going for about an hour, hour and a half. I've been talking, but I'm getting a bit, like, headachey now. I don't know why. Uh, and also, um, uh, I have a friend in Brighton who... Um, I might just go say bye to before they leave because they're leaving today. So I might, I might just, I don't want to get too late. And I've kind of said, I, I wasn't going to cut the stream off to go do it. I'm like, if it gets too late, it gets too late. But I've kind of said everything I wanted to say. So um, I think I'm going to call it. People have really made me want to do a podcast after today. I like the fact that I can have talks like these and people want to listen. But I think it'd have to be live because I like giving people my advice. I like giving advice. I, I, I don't feel like I've got all the answers to everything, but I feel like uh, I've, I've sat down and thought for long enough. I don't know. Hunter, thank you. I appreciate it, man. Love you too. Um, yeah, we might get like a we might get like a live podcast sort of thing or something. I don't know. We'll work it out. We'll, we will. We will. Uh, we'll get something going. I'm sure. Maybe we'll just do more streams like these. Hey, maybe like just once a month we'll do like a like a just a more serious stream like this. You know, something like that. Maybe even weekly. We don't know. I, I, hey, I could do one of these all the time. I feel like a lot. I think a lot of people genuinely seem to love this. And hey, I am more than happy because I. I, I love being a fun, the funny little bald character. It's very fun. I enjoy myself and I love my little meme humor and shit like that. So, like, you know, I, 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 right after this, I'll probably go watch funny meme and laugh because uh, this has been kind of like serious. But um, I'm glad people are willing to sit here and listen to me be serious for one. And I'm glad that it seems to help people as well because people express to me that it does. So that really does mean a lot. So thank you very, very much. Anyways, I'm going to call it. I don't want to do too much self-promo on this stream, but of course, if you are new, do pl please feel free to follow. I will be doing streams like this more. Your name will appear there as a little bit of a reward. Thank you to all the subs throughout the stream. I know I've not thanked any of you. I'm sorry. I just, it felt a bit wrong when I've done like this kind of serious stream, just kind of talking, just like, like reading off all the subs and shit. It's not, this stream isn't about making money or anything like that. So it just felt kind of wrong. Um, but I do appreciate the subs. It really does mean a lot. Um, of course, all my other social medias are Jetmanfall TV, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and my Discord at discord.gg slash Jetmanfall TV. All links are there at point socials. I know, I, I know this, I just said the stream wasn't about self promo, but as I was saying, I am working on coming back to YouTube. It's a lot of what I'm thinking about at the minute. It's a lot of what I'm working on at the moment. So I'd enjoy it if you were there when I got back. So if you haven't subbed to the YouTube, it really does mean a lot. I'll see you all soon, everyone. Take care. It's been a really lovely stream. I should be live tomorrow uh, with something a little bit more normal, a little bit more content heavy, you know. Something a little bit different to this. But I just, I wanted to have the stream today. It's been on my mind. I, I, I kind of came up with the idea yesterday. And I just kind of wanted to, to do it because it was on my, my mind. So thank you. Really appreciate you being here.
Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.